Hey everybody, I'm Roger. Now, this is my slideshow right here. Uh, so let's get started. Let's find out where Lion Island is. As you can see, this is a map of uh, the Lower Mainland. That red balloon right there is where Lion Island is, just off the eastern side of Richmond. And so SFU is at the top right corner there. This is a further closer look. It runs along the east-west connector, or Highway 91. That's Lion Island right there with the balloon. That's neighboring Don Island, and that's a NASA island right there. Now, this was the focus of the uh, SFU Archaeological Field School uh, for the summer to 2013 semester under the direction of Dr. Robert Meir and Dr. Douglas Ross. Uh, Dr. Ross actually did his dissertation on this island, focusing on the Japanese settlements. Uh, the island itself has, is, has what's known as Yuen Cannery, which is that large yellow structure on the western tip. Uh, it, this was part of the, uh, when uh, during the Lower Mainland along the Fraser River, uh, the huge uh, salmon harvesting industry. And off to the east is the Japanese settlements and the unknown bunkhouses. Those were the focus, mainly the focus of our excavation for the field school, mainly because we wanted to focus on the daily living and artifact assemblages of uh, those who actually lived on the island. Now, my focus is to use geovisualization for analyzing an archaeological site. The reason why is that um, often we have to link attribute data or non-spatial data, data to, to a geographic space. And one of the best ways to do it, instead of looking at forms and the Word documents, you can just, it's, we're all visual learners. And there are many ways to do this. In my case, I use three methods for, uh, for my site, for my project, which is a culmination of what I learned in Geography 356 and Geography 457. One of the methods is to use 2D maps. Every student during the field school had to contribute something to add to the knowledge base of uh, the field school. I chose to uh, uh, create some maps. So this is just a reference map right here. Consulting with Dr. Ross, I created them from a century old, uh, almost 100 years old uh, reference in engineering and public works maps. And we estimated that this was the relative location uh, on the island. Now the problem is that it, you can tell relative location of the structures, but not the absolute location because of the maps themselves. And so there, we focused on areas of DNA. This is just a zoom the map, including all the hypothetical structures and excavations. And so it's hard to tell with uh, the dots, the pink square, those are actually pink squares and red squares. That's the problem with using a 2D map is that scale is fixed, but it's good for reference uh, if you're in the field and you want to look at where you are, if you have a, especially if you have a GPS in hand. But as you can tell, scale is fixed, and then it's a selective view. So what this means is that I can o you can only look at certain areas of the geographic landscape at a time. So area D was actually that cluster, pink cluster of squares. Uh, we found out it, it's most likely a trash mine in, also because of the fact that there are scattered artifact assemblages and evidence of burning due to charcoal. Area E is uh, more associated with uh, the daily living because we found an assortment of artifacts include that are associated with daily living, including one odd, uh, notably a German mosh wash bottle. Uh, and so, uh, so to, to rectify the problem with uh, using a 2D map, second method is a fly through. Essentially what you do is, it's essentially what it is, you fly through the scene and as you can tell, I, it's a guided tour. I have a, I program a predetermined path along so that you can get a sense of scale and dimensionality too. So you can say, oh, the cannery is taller than these structures and so on. I extruded the uh, excavation units, which are highlighted in yellow and red due to the fact that it, it would be hard to see. Now that's the downside though, that it, the fact it's guided. Thank you. But one, the third way of rectifying this through an, uh, a uh, third visualization is um, using a game engine. So essentially, this allows for exploration. <laughs> this allows for exploration and kind of uh, and exploring the data through actually exploring the environment. So this is a video of me actually uh, of act of me actually navigating through this site. And so uh, there's a mini map. I'm using game elements. My compass is broken, but I've updated a lot of these issues. The idea is that when you're exploring the data and you see the data, uh, the, the, I, the workflow is, um, you focus more on the workflow and actually less on like how to inter interact and navigate through the data itself. So, oh, <laughs> apologies. So 
geovisualization, like there's so many tools and methods which you can do it, but and it depends on what your needs and what you want to show to users and other people who are interested in your material. Thank you. <laughs>